Hello everyone, I'm Mr Zurius and welcome back to Blockbench for Noobs. Before we jump into this video, I just want to point out something. On the title screen here, you'll see a new little banner. This banner will describe the current version of Minecraft that this tutorial relates to. In most cases, it will be Minecraft version 1.14.4 with Optifine. So it is safe to assume that most videos will be for this version of Minecraft with Optifine. So the information is mostly going to be about the tool itself within Blockbench rather than anything specific to a version of Minecraft. But we will be working with a Java block item which does have some rotational limits. So here we are in the Blockbench workspace and first thing we're going to cover is what is a vertex? Well if I just go up here to my vertex snap tool, you'll see it pops out saying move one cube to another cube by connecting to vertices. If I just click this and then click our cube, you'll see all these blocks appear and it's showing you the vertexes or vertices. So essentially what a vertex is, is a point where two or more edges meet. So essentially it's a corner. It doesn't have to be a corner but technically it is where two points meet on a cube or your model. So I'm just going to hit Control D, I'm going to just duplicate my block here. You'll see I've got two blocks of the exact same size. And then I'm going to hit X, which is the default for Vertex tool. I'm just going to rotate a bit so you can see what's going on here. Let's see, I want to click on this one here and say I want to connect it to the cube on this Vertex here. I then click here and then click this. Now before I click on this, you'll see that a line has appeared to show you where it's going to connect. I move it down here, it does the exact same thing. Handy little line shows you exactly where it's going to go. Let's just click here and there you are, the two blocks have been connected. It's rare that you would want to connect two blocks on a diagonal vertex like this. So let's look at a more common method for using this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my blocks here and I'm going to just make them a little bit bigger so they're more rectangular. Just holding Alt and dragging it out. There we have two equal block sizes. I'm then going to press R, so my R button does the exact same as clicking this center pivot button right here. Centering the pivot, what this does is it will rotate the block around the center of the block's mass. Whereas if I click on this one, you can see that the pivot is down here in this corner. So if I just rotate it here, it will rotate around that point. Make sense? I'll just show you this one again. The pivot is in the center of this block, so if I rotate it, it will rotate around this pivot point. I don't believe there's a hotkey by default for this, but I have set it to R because it's something I use very often. Now the reason why I want to center the pivot is because we're going to rotate these blocks a little bit. Being a Java object, it's limited in how much it can rotate. You can see here I'm clicking up the increments and I'll show you all of them. Essentially, you have a choice between 22.5 degrees, 45 degrees, and again 22 degrees. So there's your full range of rotations within block wrench. I cannot mix these rotations either, You'll see here that it tells you this. However, I can rotate this up to this point here, which resets it to zero. I can then rotate it on another axis, as you can see here. So what has this got to do with a vertice? Well, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna just rotate this one increment. I'm gonna hit X. I'm going to grab my vertice here and here and connect them up. So you'll see we've got these points connected and it's starting to look a bit like a curve. But we can make this a bit better by grabbing this corner here and inserting it here. And it now seamlessly connects these blocks up. Now one thing you want to watch out for though is if I just change the marker colour of this one you'll immediately see we've got Z-fighting going on here. If you don't know what Z-fighting is, essentially it means that the rendering is struggled to know which one of these blocks to render on top, so it's flickering between the two. To fix this, you can just paint them both the same texture or the same colour, or you can resize one of the blocks so that they're no longer overlapping. Whichever method you choose is entirely up to you and your artistic needs. For now, I'm just going to leave this one as overlapping because we can't see it because the marker color is the same on both blocks. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this method to create a wheel. So I'm just going to hit Control D again, bring this out. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more. So you'll see because I haven't centered the pivot here, it's rotating at a strange angle. But if I just do this again, uh, it will then rotate on itself. Now it's not a big deal because we're immediately going to just grab it and then put it down here anyway. But it's just something to keep in mind. So sometimes what I'll do is to speed this up is I'll just duplicate this one, I'll then duplicate another one, and then I'll quickly just rotate this, and then rotate this one twice. And then what I can do is I can just grab this one here and just attach it here. Now if I just select both of these, well how do you select both of them? Well, you can hold shift and then click on them if you like. Or if you like to work from a quad view, what you can do is go to a side view here, or any one of the views actually, and drag to select everything. So let's drag these ones here, you'll see it selects them, and then we just grab the vertice here, and then connect here. You'll see that in no time at all we've taken our cubes here, and turned it into a 
rather nice looking curve. If you like, you can continue to do this all the way around and create a circle, or you can just do what I prefer to do, and that's just select all of these, hit Control D, you'll see that we've got a complete copy of it here. I'm just gonna hit R to center my pivot, and then I'm just gonna rotate the entire thing round. Let me just get rid of this cube, make sure I've got all of these selected, and then I'm just gonna hit X and join this up here. And there you go, we've already got half of a circle complete. I'm just gonna hold down shift, click the bottom cube, click the top cube. Now what I don't want to do this time is I don't want to copy these ones here, so I'm just gonna click on them again with shift held down. We've got all of these ones selected, hit control D. Now that I've got these duplicated, I'm just gonna to go to transform and I'm gonna flip it on the X axis. And then if I just drag this out a bit, I could try and manually align this because I mean, that looks fine there, doesn't it? But again, why bother doing that when I can have the system do the work for me? So just grab this vertex up here, connect it up here, and there we have it. We have a circle. So you can see we've already got a bunch of Z fighting in there. That's because the, the default non-textured blocks does technically have a texture. You can see the different shades of green here. That's why you can see the flickering this time around, whereas you can't over here. So this is already looking pretty good. Most Minecraft models in game don't have these sorts of curves. They have slight angles, but nothing as round or circular as this. So let's just grab everything and I'm going to just switch back to my move tool and then I'm going to just hold Alt and Shift, drag it out a bit, and there we have it. So we've got a, a nice looking tire model. Obviously, if you wanted to finish this off, feel free. There's a, a download in the description for this shape. Alternatively, if you don't feel like doing this yourself, you can go up to Filter, Plugins, and then what you want to find is the Shape Generator. You see I've already got it installed here, but if you don't have it installed, click Available and it should be in the list here. I can then go to Filter and Generate Shape, and we're looking for Hexadecagon, which is basically a 16-sided shape. And let's see, I don't want it to be hollow, and we'll just leave all the... let's put it on the Z-axis. We don't want it to be hollow. Yep, all that looks fine. Click Confirm. And wow, there you go. There is basically the exact same shape, but this time it's not hollow. Just bring it out a little bit. If you just want a quick shape in a hurry, there you go. If I can just delete this, I will then do it again. Filter, generate shape. We've got our hexadecagon. And this time we want it to be hollow. And then click confirm. Yep, that's fine. The border width is one. Yep, sure. There we go. We've basically just got the exact same shape we've already created. Obviously having the plugin is much quicker, but if you want to learn how the tools work, I would advise that you do at least try and do this at least once. So before I call this episode on Versus to a close, I thought I would introduce you to a friend. Meet, um, Larry, the weird cactus snake person. I just created this in about 10 minutes or so, just to show off what we can do if we take some cubes. We just rotate them a little bit and then connect them up via Vertus and then just resize them a little bit. So I've created this weird cactus snake guy. Um, yeah, you can see we've got lots of different angles on this thing. I did try and make it a bit terrifying, but it kind of just looks kind of cute at the same time. I don't know. But here's the fun part. So I am issuing a challenge to everyone watching this video. So what I want you to do is I want you to create some sort of snake, worm, something angular, something, some kind of creature, monster, whatever you like. And I want you to post it to me on Twitter or in my Discord. And what I'll do is I'll also leave a, a link to this model in the description. If you want to take this, you can improve this, you can edit it, you can do whatever you want with it, have some fun. And anyone that does post any replies with their creations will get the creator role in my Discord. You can also find a link to that in the description. So everyone, I hope you have a better understanding of vertices and Blockbench and how you can use them to make weird angular snake cactus monsters or something probably much better than this. I really hope you learned a lot. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please leave some comments below. Let me know what you enjoyed about it. If there was something you thought was a bit maybe wrong or could have been explained better, again, please leave a comment. I'll do it the best I can to get back in touch and answer your questions if I can. But if you really want to get in touch with me, the best thing you can do is like my content, subscribe, join me on my Discord and ask me some questions in there and start some conversations. So everyone, I think we'll leave it there. So thanks very much for watching and have a good one.